Welcome to another episode of The Brand Called You, a video and podcast show that brings you leadership lessons, knowledge, experience, and wisdom from hundreds of successful individuals from around the world. Today, it's my pleasure to welcome a very accomplished individual from the search firm world, Shailja Dutt. Shailja, welcome to the show. Wonderful to be here. Thank you. Uh, Shailja is the chairperson and founder of Stellar Search. She's also the ch- uh, chairperson of the Stellar Search Foundation. So Shailja, tell me, what would you say are three key milestones in your life or your career? So uh, um, I think the first milestone was getting married. Mm -hmm. And I know that a lot of people, uh, you know, would say this is very cliche, but I think it's singularly the most important decision we take in our Mm lives. It impacts every aspect of our lives. And for me, it's had a huge impact, of course, not just personally, but professionally. I think my husband's really been the wind beneath my wings. Mm -hmm. And um, the second... um, milestone and I, I, I don't think I'd call it milestones but I, I would call them these moments you know where life just changes um, the, the second one was the realization of how powerful entrepreneurship really is okay. and I, I'm going to talk to you about this for a minute so I was a young entrepreneur small company two three crore company this was 15 years back and uh, I'd gone to an IFC party Mm-hmm. And everybody was talking about deals that were running into millions of mm-hmm. dollars, etc. And I, I was standing with someone and he said, oh, what do you do? Mm-hmm. And I said, you know, nothing important, actually. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and he said, well, why do you say that? I said, no, no, I just, I just run a small company. Mm-hmm. So he said, did you found the company? And I said, yes, I did. Mm-hmm. He said, listen, you're what... One of us in, in IFC are looking for and we mm-hmm. worship. And this is, entrep- you know, you created something out of nothing. Mm-hmm. You should be really proud. You shouldn't say that you're doing nothing. Mm-hmm. And, and it was such a pivotal moment for me to realize that that is actually the truth. That I'm creating, I've created something out of nothing. I've created jobs for people. I'm responsible for their lives. And... And I think it was from that point onwards that I never looked back okay. on, on my journey. Mm-hmm. And I think the, the third milestone would have been in 2014, 2015, I mm-hmm. went through a year of coaching. Mm-hmm. And, uh, I, I, you know, entrepreneurs think they know it all. Once you feel good about being an entrepreneur, you feel you know it all. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and, you know, just understanding what my blind spots were as an entrepreneur, as a leader, and, and then finding my purpose and, and living that life which was driven by purpose, okay. I think was the third milestone, which Fabulous. I think has been very important in my Fabulous. life. That's fantastic. And what a great story you told me about entrepreneurship. So, Shalija, let's move to your firm, Stellar Search. Tell me about the scope of work that you handle at, at this organization. So, uh, we're an executive search firm. We hire leaders for mm-hmm. organizations. We do this across emerging markets in Asia and Africa. Mm-hmm. So, it's a pretty large geographical coverage. It's India, China, Indonesia, Philippines, Thailand, Singapore, mm-hmm. Malaysia, the whole nine yards of Southeast Asia the Middle East, and uh, East and South Africa. Mm-hmm. But the firm's fairly global. We source talent from across the globe to come and work in these markets. We work in some specific areas. So we have uh, our largest vertical is healthcare and life sciences. We're very, very well known for that. Mm-hmm. We work a lot in the consumer space, uh, what, what I call B2C, anything which is a B2C business. And, um, and then in the brick and mortar space, engineering, mm-hmm. fertilizers, EPC, infra, energy, that sort of thing. Mm-hmm. And a lot of this work, I mean, I, I think the, the practice that sort of uh, runs through all these three verticals is our private equity practice, where we do a lot of work with private equity firms mm-hmm. um, in these areas. Okay. What I don't do is any work in financial services because mm-hmm. my husband's a banker. Mm-hmm. So I chose not to ever venture in that direction. Mm-hmm. And uh, no, no really uh, work in IT or um, uh, telecom. Okay. So none in, in the professional, you know, that, uh, the services space. Mm-hmm. 
Very interesting. So, you know, as you were building, I mean, from your meeting at IHC, when you were suddenly, if I can use the word discovered, you built Stellar into quite a powerhouse. Tell me some of the challenges you have faced as you have built this organization. You know, I, I did think a lot about uh, this over the last couple of years because I've been asked this question in many mm -hmm. forums. Mm -hmm. And honestly, uh, Ashutosh, I'm sure there were lots of challenges. I'm sure, I mean, I, I reflect back and I think, yes, there were really not such great days. There were years where you wondered what the hell you were doing. Mm -hmm. But, you know, in hindsight, you feel like what an adventure. Mm -hmm. How much fun I had mm -hmm. doing this. Mm. And all, you know, all the things that I assume would have been challenges don't really feel like challenges. Okay. They just feel like learning experiences. Mm. So I, I'm going to say that I didn't feel at any point in time that were like insurmountable challenges or sure. things were difficult. Okay. And, you know, you must have started from India and then now you've, you know, grown all over the, uh, certainly Southeast Asia, Middle East and North and West Africa, as you mentioned. Uh, what kind of uh, steps did you have to take when you scaled up your business? So, uh, so much of it happened because you were an entrepreneur that saw an opportunity. Mm -hmm. And it was not, you know, it was not really by design. So uh, my husband uh, used to work for GE and, uh, you know, he was moving around a lot in Southeast Asia and... Mm -hmm. I used to spend a lot of time with him because he would be in Thailand or in Japan and then he spent three years in China and we were this long distance marriage mm -hmm. and I would go and spend 10 days with him every okay. month wherever mm -hmm. he was. And, uh, uh, you know, I would just see opportunity. I would meet people, I would see opportunity and, and that's really how the business started building in these okay. markets. Mm -hmm. Then we took a conscious decision. Uh, 10 years ago to move to Singapore. Okay. Uh, and, and that was, I think, literally the only thing I've done by design, mm -hmm. building a global business, was to set up in Singapore. Because yes. I, I thought it gave me more credibility, especially mm -hmm. with the Chinese. Mm -hmm. to, uh, they didn't want to work with an Indian search firm. So it gave me more credibility. And it, it helped us build a pretty good China practice. And, uh, and that was literally the only thing done by design. Okay. So tell me, you know, when I was growing up and I'm much older, um, you know, when I was with ITC and you, the, the, the search firms in those days used to be called headhunters, <laughs> right? Yes. When yeah. did the headhunters of the 90s become the search firms of the new century? Yeah. So this is interesting because I joined SAT in the 90s. Mm -hmm. And... Um, and I used to work with one of the global executive search firms. And, uh, and you know, I, I really feel search was a lot about your Rolodex. It mm -hmm. was about who you knew. Correct. I think the change really happened when the global firms, more and more global firms started coming into the country. And a lot of us who had worked with global firms set up independent practices. Mm -hmm. And we moved from who I know to how can I use technology to find the people I need to know? Hmm. And, and, and I, I think that that is where the change happened. That okay. we went from just being networked mm -hmm. to running processes okay. and using technology. That's, mm -hmm. that's when the shift happened. Okay. And again, you know, uh, you know I'm, I'm past the stage where anyone would call me or I have been for almost 20 years. But it used to be a very big thing. And both my sons are now in two different parts of the world and they keep getting calls from search firms. At what stage of my career as a young professional manager do I become relevant to uh, a stellar or another search firm um, who now reach out to me and say, hey, listen, there's this opportunity that's come up. Uh, I think you should consider it. So I would say definitely 10 years ago, it would be the people who would have uh, 20 years of experience or, mm -hmm. you know, 18, 20 years of experience. But I think, with, you know, you're looking at younger and younger leadership mm -hmm. in uh, corporate life now across continents. Mm -hmm. 
And I, I think that typically when you are in that 12 to 15 years of experience is when you should start flirting with search firms and okay. talking to them mm. and, uh, and making your presence felt. Mm. Uh, a lot of it is about deciding what sector you're going to build your career mm. in or what industry or what function you want to build your career in. Choose your firm really carefully. Mm. And it, it's never about the firm. It's always about the consultant you work with in the firm. This is a very individual business. Mm. And, um, and then it is about, you know, talking to the person. And, and search is, well, we look at things from the client's perspective. Mm. You know, uh, the candidate is a means to an end in a, in a way. But you always tend to look at things from the client's perspective. What do they need? Mm. And how can you add value to their business? And I think that in that journey, mm. uh, you're, you're going to reach out to candidates who you think are relevant. Okay. And uh, for young people, I think that they need to understand that you know, you, you don't call a search firm and expect that, oh, they're going to give you a job. Mm. What you have to do is slowly cultivate a relationship. And it's a fairly quid pro quo. You know, mm. search firms want knowledge. They want to know what's going on in an industry. How are you, how's your business transforming? How are you changing uh, your supply chain? How you mm. digitize? And I'm just giving examples yeah, at the yeah. top of my head, you know. And they want to know what's going on. You want to know what's going on in the talent world mm. as a candidate. Mm. So you build this relationship on this, I, I think, exchanging knowledge. Very interesting. And, and that's, that's really how you do it well. Very interesting. So I'm going to ask you a follow-up question because about 72% of our viewers and listeners around the world are below 32 years of age. So this is going to be a question with a lot of relevance for them. Uh, you said after 10 to 12 years, you should start flirting with a search firm. My question to you is, how do I, as someone who's just started to enter senior middle management, if I can use that term, yeah. get attention of a search firm or, or consultant? So I'm going to give you the answer which is applicable across generations, Correct. frankly. Mm. The, the fact is you need to have a personal brand. Mm. And today, with, you know, the advent of the digital uh, economies, mm -hmm. uh, it's very easy to do this. You can mm -hmm. create a strong digital brand or presence for yourself. Okay. And you've got to stop. I, I think for the younger people, they, they have to stop being like little frogs in the well. That mm -hmm. I'm sitting in my company and I'm influencing my boss and the few peers that I work with. The fact is today the world is your oyster. Correct. Everything is, you know... It's a boundaryless world thanks mm. to the internet. You need to make your presence felt in this boundaryless mm. world. You need to talk about things that interest you, things that you are influencing, uh, and you need to build that personal brand. It's mm. as simple as that. Okay. Okay. And what, when you say that you, know, you need to get a little more uh, visible or build your personal brand, you mean start writing your blogs and get active on social media or start writing articles? How do you start building this network? I think, I mean, you've answered your own question that mm -hmm. you start with sharing knowledge, okay. experiences. I also think one, you know, something which is very powerful and I, mm -hmm. I think natural leaders do it very well mm -hmm. is also sharing vulnerability. Okay. Uh, and oh, your experiences right. that, you know, come out of vulnerability. So, I think that is what makes people stand out. Hmm. It's not where you went for a holiday. It certainly isn't, uh, you know, uh, your home, your car, etc. Mm -hmm. It is so much more. And I think the earlier you realize that in life, the more powerful a brand you can build for yourself. Very fascinating. Okay. So now let's move on. And uh, let, let me ask you that, you know, you built this incredible business. What are some of the core values you believe in for your business? Yeah, if I could actually just sort of turn my system, I would show you the right here on the wall. Mm -hmm. uh, because I'm sitting in my home office. Mm -hmm. But, um, and I think that I lead my life with mm -hmm. these values. I think this is what we've inculcated in our family mm -hmm. and definitely in the business. Mm -hmm. The first is passion. 
you've got to bring energy and positivity into your relationships, into your engagements, into what you do. Okay. If you're not excited about doing something, mm -hmm. then don't do it. Okay. So uh, it it has to it has to be that deep burning passion. Um, and that's one of the core values in Stella. I think mm -hmm. we hire very specifically people who are very passionate about this business. Mm -hmm. And we live this through okay. everything that we do in the company. Okay. Uh, the second is empathy. You know, if, if you are always going to worry about being in control, in charge, mm -hmm. when are you going to worry about the people who are in your charge? Mm -hmm. And, and for me, it is also about every candidate that the firm is engaging with. Okay. We're changing their lives. Hmm. You know, you have to, and, and, and the same thing in your personal life. I mean, hmm. if you don't have empathy in the relationships that you have, you have nothing. I agree. I agree. So, uh, so empathy is another value. Um, courage is, is something that I have always believed in. I mean, it is, it, it, it's something that really drives me that you've got to challenge the status mm. quo. Mm. You have to challenge it every time and you have to do it with determination. You have to do it with tenacity. Wonderful. Wonderful. And uh, the last is authenticity. Be yourself. Sure. sure. You know, uh, and that sort of encompasses integrity and, you know, all of that. But you have to be yourself. Fabulous. So now let, let's talk a little bit about your foundation, you know, the Stellar hmm. Search Foundation. Tell me a little yeah. bit about your foundation. So the foundation is very small right now. It's yeah. really something that I want to build over the next uh, couple of years. Mm -hmm. But we do a lot of work with the girl child. Mm -hmm. Okay. And we do a lot of work with old age mm -hmm. uh, homes. So it, it, the, the foundation basically is currently driven by friends and family. Mm -hmm. Okay. We haven't really built it into something which is larger. And, and it's really about picking and choosing initiatives where we genuinely feel that our time mm. and our money is put to really good use and it's making a difference in someone's life. Wonderful. So we, we've, we've been doing a lot of things with, the, you know, with NGOs that work with the girl child and that's been going on literally from the day I started the company. Mm. Uh, okay. and, and now we've sort of also moved into old age or geriatric care. Okay. Very interesting. So, yeah. Very interesting. So, Shaila, now let's, let me talk to you a little bit about gender diversity. You know, as, <laughs> as a woman who's built such an amazing uh, business, gender diversity or gender balance at work is being talked about in India over the last few years. And of course, there's legislation. Uh, it's been talked in the Western part of the world much more, but maybe over the last 15 odd years. What are your views on how can this imbalance be corrected faster? Okay. So, I, you know, I'm yeah, yeah. I, I'm going to be my authentic self here. Absolutely. And, and, Please, you, you must know, be. Just, uh, I'm not going to mince words, but I have to say that it's honestly very, uh, it, it's a lot of window dressing mm. still. Mm -hmm. uh, it's very nice to talk about these things, but what are you actually doing about them? Mm -hmm. I've been part of several conversations on, you know, with board members, with mm -hmm. leaders, where when we're talking about why don't we look at gender diversity mm -hmm. in this particular role, and they've, they've actually just said a flat no. Mm -hmm. Interesting. And, 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 you know, when you say, and that tells you that how much of it is just talk. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I think with the pandemic, I think, you know, the post-pandemic effect is, I think this is going to accelerate into a correction mm. because now, all you know, all these things which were very, well, they were judged uh, by corporates, which is marriage, mm. maternity, motherhood, you know, now you're working from home. Mm. So, so, you know, there is, you can't pass judgment on the person's not available or yeah. so and so forth. And, and so I think this is, this is a big positive uh, move in that direction. But if you ask me that when will this, you know, when can we actually accelerate correction? Mm -hmm. It's going to happen only when we accelerate education around okay. this subject. Mm -hmm. um, and we 
we stop talking about it, but we start talking about how can we actually get something done. Hmm. So when mindsets will change, that is when amazing. You know, we, why are we? I feel foolish that we actually have to talk about gender hmm. diversity. Hmm. It should not even be discussed. I agree. I mean, fifty percent of the world has to get fifty percent of or more of what okay. should be theirs by right. Absolutely, I agree with you. So, Completely agree. So, Shailjala, let's move. Uh, I've got time for three, maybe three questions for you personally. Uh, you know, for someone who's built an amazing business, for someone who's managed a great home, ten days with your husband wherever he was, and then continue to be, keep building your business, and there's so much more to look forward to. At your current stage of life, what does success mean to you? Ah, uh, that I matter to the people who matter. Okay. That is what success means to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I have done this for 15 years. Sunir and I have lived in different countries, raised two wonderful boys. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and we've, we've raised our family. We've run two households. Um, and, and he often would ask me, like, it's really crazy what we're doing, you know. Mm -hmm. And I would always tell him that, you know, as long as we matter to the people who matter, how does it the rest of it doesn't matter. Correct. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I Very think nice. that's what success means to me. Very interesting. And a follow-up question to you from that is, who or what inspires you to keep doing so much wonderful stuff? So my inspiration actually is deeply rooted in fitness. Mm -hmm. um, I was an athlete when I was young and uh, I always played a sport my mm -hmm. entire life. And then as I got older, I took to... Um, you know, working out pretty seriously and uh, a lot of yoga and, you know, that sort of, I, we, both my husband and I experiment with a lot of forms of fitness. Mm -hmm. And I always feel that you get very inspired when you do difficult things. Mm -hmm. okay. I, I remember, um, and I'm going to share one quick incident with mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. So uh, when my younger son was 14, on a whim, we decided to go to the Everest base camp. Okay. I was sitting and talking on a table mm -hmm. that we need to do a mother-son trip. And I said, okay, let's just go to the base camp. Mm -hmm. And we had never trekked in our lives before. Mm -hmm. Never, ever. Mm -hmm. And we went. And it was amazing. And uh, we went alone, just mm -hmm. with a, not in a group, just mother and son. Mm -hmm. And um, whenever I feel down or my son feels I'm down and out or I'm, I'm stressed. He says, remember, you're the girl who just mm. got up and walked to the top of the world. Mm. So don't let anything get you down. And those Fabulous. are the sort of little things that inspire you. Mm. Wonderful. I'm going to come to my last question now, Shalja. Um, and this again for thousands of young people who will be watching us speak. What is your advice to a young individual who's starting off on their corporate career? Oh, it's a long list of advice, but I'm, I'm going to try and sort of fit it into the one thing that I think matters for me. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of young people let their behavior determine the outcome mm -hmm. of situations. Uh, and they're very focused on the things that don't matter. Mm. I think my advice to them would be focus on the outcome. Okay. And, and then let that drive your behavior mm. rather than the other way around. Just keep your eye on the goal, on okay. what you want to get done. Mm. And try and do one thing at a time. I think that we really mess up when we try to do many things at the same time. We, we can't be present in that situation. It's a very hard lesson to teach young people. Mm. Mm. But if they get this early in their life, the rest of their life is going to be a walk okay. in the park. Wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Wonderful. So, Shelja, thank you very much. It's been such a pleasure speaking to you. I wish you and Stella and everything else that you're doing lots of success. Thank you. Thank you for listening to the brand called You Videocast and Podcast platform that brings you knowledge, experience and wisdom of hundreds of successful individuals from around the world. Do visit our website www.tbcy.in to watch and listen to the stories of many more individuals.
You can also follow us on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. Just search for the brand called you.